The planning stage in the engineering design process is an important step. Kids always want to jump into the create stage, but the plan is just as important. In this episode, I will be sharing with you creative ways to use in the planning stage of this process and even help kids love this stage too. Welcome to the Elementary STEM Coach Podcast, a show that'll help you with lesson ideas, systems, and actionable tips to apply to your classroom. I am your host, Naomi Meredith, a former classroom teacher turned current STEM teacher and coach. With over a decade of experience teaching and a master's degree in STEM leadership, I am here to coach you throughout the year to help you gain back more time to create innovative experiences for your students. Grab your earbuds and let's get started. For this episode in the engineering design process series, I have a free poster and planning guide that you can use to integrate into your lessons. You can grab it in the show notes or use this direct link, naomimeredith.com slash podcast EDP. When I first started teaching STEM, I did have kids plan their designs. When we got to the plans, kids would scribble their designs and legit scribble their designs. It was a scribble. And within five minutes, they were all done and ready to create. I knew with my experience being a classroom teacher before being a STEM teacher that this probably wasn't a plan that was going to be helpful. And I really had to improve my teaching to really teach students how to thoughtfully plan and really make their plan be an important stage in the process. In fact, kids love the planning stage just as much as the create stage, and I'm going to be sharing with you these creative ways to really enhance this stage in the process where they aren't just scribbling their designs just because they need to plan, but it's actually something useful for them. The first way to do this is to discuss the importance of planning. Like anything, our kids want to know, why are we doing this? I do tell my students with the planning stage, if we don't plan, we plan to fail. Now, failing is good in STEM, but really I'm saying if we just jump into the create stage all the time, we're really not understanding the reason why we are doing things. And it's just try as we go, which is also fine, but it's really helping students to visualize and bring those ideas out of their head and onto paper, or really the way that you want them to plan. I like to relate the engineering design process to the writing process when I'm teaching students. There are stages to go in order for both processes, but you can always go back to a stage. Just because we did the planning stage and we move on to create doesn't mean that you can't go back and plan. This has really developed over the years with my students, and I have had students create a plan, design something, it doesn't work, and then they really do go back to the drawing board. So teaching thoughtful plans is so beneficial, and likewise, classroom teachers will like this too because you're helping them with their teaching when it does come to the writing process and why planning is an important stage within this flow. I found a really great book recently that you can read to your students to help them understand the importance of plans. It is written by HGTV's property brothers, Jonathan and Drew Scott, and it is such an adorable picture book. It's called Build a Brother Big Plans, and it talks about them as little boys and how they had an idea and they wanted to build something. So they dreamed up ideas in their heads and started making lots of different plans for their design. They finally picked a plan that they wanted to build. They got the materials. They started building. And well, I'm not going to tell you the rest. I don't want to ruin the ending. Definitely check it out. It is so cute and a great way to introduce planning within your classroom. This could be a short mini lesson. It doesn't have to take the whole time, but I highly recommend this book. Also with the planning process, think about having criteria for what their plans should align to. This has definitely been a game changer in my classroom. I'm not having kids scribble little things anymore. There is something for them to refer to, 
to improve their work. I have a four-point rubric that I post on my TV. You could print this out for students if you would like. I just have it posted, and we talk about this for every single project that we need to plan for. There are four different categories, and the first category is a one-star plan. And a one-star plan is just drawing your design. This is something that I expect out of my kindergarten and first graders. A two-star plan is drawing and labeling your design with one view. So again, this is what I would expect for my first and second graders. Then we move on to a three-star plan, and that is drawing and labeling more than one view. So if I was the inventor of a TV remote, I would draw the front of the TV remote, label all the parts, and then I also would draw the back or maybe the inside and label all the parts as well. This is what I expect second grade on up. And then a four-star plan to take it to the next level is doing everything in the three, drawing and labeling more than one view, and then explaining what each part does. This has really helped my students understand how their plans can be more thoughtful and really thinking about the components that will make up their design and the materials that they might use. This is also extremely helpful if you are implementing the maker menu, which we talk about in episode six, where they are thoughtfully plating their designs, and then they can create a shopping list to coincide with this plan. So if that is a process that you're implementing the maker menu, this is the time where you would talk about the menu as well. If you want younger students to really focus in on the coloring, I also recommend using a coloring rubric. I don't make my older students color because they really are trying to be thoughtful when drawing and labeling and explaining, but the coloring could be a great option for your younger students to help them think about the different parts that their plan or design would have. So on your coloring rubric, you could have three different categories, and then it could be stars or it could be smiley faces, frowny faces, um, a medium face. I don't know how to call that, but a straight line face. You know what I'm talking about, right? (laughs) So you could have three points in your rubric. So the first one could be coloring in the lines, colors that make sense, and no white space. So helping your younger students really be thoughtful when they're coloring their plans. I like to also teach students that planning is a lot like creating a patent for an invention. Over the summer, I went to Chicago with my teacher, Honey, and there was this cool booth. They had all of these cool plaques that were burned in with different images. And one of them caught my eye and it was a patent of the Lego brick. And it was so cool because it showed all of the different layers of the Lego brick. It had all of these different labels and it was just so thoughtfully planned. And I have this hanging up in my classroom. When I'm talking about plans, I get this little plaque out. I take it off the wall and I explain to them that Lego didn't actually have a patent before they were selling their bricks and people were copying their designs. So a patent is important for inventors because they need to be extremely thoughtful about their plans, include every single detail, and they even have a whole document that explains every single part that is labeled in their pictures so nobody can steal their ideas. So the kids are super enamored by this story and it's true, it's history and You can fact check me, maybe I'm off by some details, but overall it's pretty much true. So it's important how students can see those connections and when they hear the words patent pending, they know what it means now. So that's why really discussing the importance of planning is important for students. So then they really understand that this is an important stage and it's not all just about the creating when we're using the engineering design process. During the planning stage, I also like to have students be aware of what materials they will be working with within this project. This, again, influences your plan, so you kind of know what you're working with, and then you can design your drawings from there. You can have a set list of materials or, again, have a makerspace menu. It's up to you and depends on the project and the time of year and the time that you have. I have a lesson that is a one-day project, sometimes two, but it's a spider pulley, and I have very specific materials that I want students to use. They can use string that is looped on a pencil. 
that will pull the spider ring. So those little spooky spider rings, they have those materials and then Lego bricks and a spider web. I let students be aware that those are the materials that they will be using. And this really influences their design. For younger students, if they're planning on paper or on seesaw, I like to have pictures of the materials if it's a set list and students can draw lines to the materials list to their drawing. And that's just another way that they can label. That way they're not overwhelmed by writing the words. I'm not here in a writing class. Writing is important in STEM, but That's just a really creative way that you can have students plan if you have the pictures and the words of the materials already on their paper. Third, provide a space for students to explain their plans. Planning through drawing and labeling, in my opinion, is just part of the plan. Give students an opportunity to explain how they're hoping their design or invention will work. I would do this by having a question that students can explain through writing, an audio recording, or a video recording, like in Seesaw or Flipgrid. And that way you can really see how their plan is even getting to the lesson objective, which is ultimately tied to the standard. Kids love talking about their designs. You probably have kids coming up to you when they're done planning and tell you all about what they drew. So harness all that talking and put it into a platform for them. Seesaw, Flipgrid, any other platform that you can think of where they can do this. And this is really great for them to go back and reflect. And even they can go back and listen to those recordings right before they start creating so they don't forget all of these amazing ideas. Finally, provide those creative ways to plan for students. And here are different ways I like to do this. Of course, drawing and labeling is super important. And I do have kids plan on paper whether it's a specific graphic organizer I want them to use, or even scratch or graph paper is a great option as well. I love also having the kids take pictures of their plans and posting this in Seesaw. So then I'm not keeping track of all their papers class after class. This really helps with the organization of materials. If I am using Seesaw as a planning tool for kindergarten and first grade, I will have them draw directly in the app. Again, this depends on the project, depends on the day. I will also use paper for them. But I noticed that for kindergarten and first grade, drawing and seesaw works out great for them because they're not as detailed with their drawings yet. And having the abundance of colors and different tools really helps the kids who are not as engaged within this part of the process really able to produce something on their screen. Another way that you can have students plan is to verbalize their plan. You can just have students think, pair, share, and talk to each other what they are hoping to do. Back in episode 15, I actually provided this as an option for my fifth grade students, and then they ended up all drawing their plans anyway. So that was a great success story because they actually did want to be a part of the planning process. But verbalizing your plan is a great way to have students still be involved in the engineering design process. But if you're short on time, you can definitely do this as well. Another way that I've had students plan is to have them gather their materials. Maybe they do have a paper plan. Maybe they don't. Maybe they just verbalized it. I have them gather their materials, and then I actually don't give them the tape, glue, or scissors yet. They tinker around with what they have first and think about different combinations of how the materials can be put together. And then in a few minutes, I will eventually give them the tape, the glue, the scissors, so they can manipulate those materials. So that's a fun hands-on way that students can plan as well. Another type of planning is something that I actually did the other day, and it was some a moment on the fly, and I hadn't planned this, you guys. It was just something that I needed to get this student engaged. They kept running out of the classroom and they did not want to draw. They did had one nothing to do with drawing, picking up a pencil. We were doing the build a shelter challenge for fifth grade for STEM survival camp. If you want to hear more about STEM survival camp, go back and listen to episode four. He did not want to do anything. So instead of drawing and labeling, I asked the student if they wanted to plan their design using Play-Doh. 
and they were thrilled to do this. I grabbed different colors of Play-Doh and they ended up designing their plan with the Play-Doh. And then we took a picture of the plan and put the Play-Doh plan within a bag if they wanted to look at it the next day while they're building their shelter design. They ended up building an entirely different design, which is totally fine. That's so normal when it comes to planning. You might start one way and it goes an entirely different way, which is great. But it was a cool way for the child to be successful in my classroom. And good news, they didn't run away, which I was so excited about. As a recap, let's talk about the ways to really boost up the planning process when it comes to the engineering design process within your STEM space. First, discuss the importance of planning. Next, share the materials before planning. Third, provide a space for kids to explain their designs. And fourth, think about trying creative ways to plan. Again, I'll be continuing to dive into the engineering design process with this mini podcast series. And don't forget to download your free engineering design process poster and planning guide to help you along the way. You can grab that at naomimeredith.com slash podcast EDP, and it will also be linked in the show notes for today. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Elementary STEM Coach Podcast. I would love to connect with you over on Instagram at Naomi Meredith underscore or send me an email to elementary STEM coach podcast at gmail.com. Also, make sure to check out my website, Naomi Meredith.com, to see all the show notes from today's episode and shop my K through 5 STEM resources. Any questions you have, needs for resources, or ideas for episodes, get in touch. I'll talk to you soon.